The rise of Dayton's Obi Toppin was the story of the college basketball season, and he now has the Citizen Naismith Men's Player of the Year Award to add to his growing list of accolades and accomplishments. For every highlight dunk, there was also a concerted effort to make the smart play. Stolen! Obi Showtime! Toppin fostered a cohesion in the Flyers that led Dayton to believe it could power through the NCAA tournament and win the whole thing. He has grown into a superstar, but still keeps a chip on his shoulder after not being offered a single Division I scholarship out of high school. Although Toppin didn't have a chance to fulfill his dream of cutting down the nets, it in no way diminishes his season for the ages. All right, let's welcome in this year's 2020 Citizen Naismith Trophy Player of the Year winner. That would be Obi Toppin. Obi, congratulations on winning the award. First off, I look at the finalist list and like that's one heck of a starting five. What does it mean to you to have this award among the other guys that you were in competition with? Uh, it definitely means a lot. Uh, they they all were great players, but uh, I, I want to give thanks to you guys, and I want to give thanks to. To my coaches and my teammates, without those guys, I don't think I would be the player or person that I am today. You guys had a, a tremendous season, only a couple of losses, both in overtime to Colorado and Kansas, obviously, what would have been. But when you look back at your collegiate career in general, we talked about what offers you had, which were none, and the, the zero-star recruiting, which was, was low. And here you are having one of the best seasons, not only in Dayton program history, but any college kid out there. Yeah, uh... I just knew uh, com coming in today and I was going to have to work really hard and everybody pushed me as soon as I got there. And so that's why I love those guys. Uh, they, they helped me be the person and player that I am today. And without those guys, I wouldn't have a, uh, accomplished this. So I thank them every single day for that. And I joke about being a kid. You guys are, are, are grown men setting the school, by the way, that Dayton for wins. 20 straight to end the season, number three AP ranking. So it is a Dayton double. Your head coach, Anthony Grant, came away with the award on Thursday. What's that been like being under his tutelage, and how best do you describe the relationship you have with Coach Grant? Coach Grant is an amazing person. Uh, he, he's an amazing coach. He pushed us every single day to uh, be the players that we were this year. And uh, he, he has so much emotion for the game. And every, every day was the same for him. He pushed us, even though we was winning by 30-some games, he pushed us the same every single day. And he's definitely an amazing coach. And we'll, we'll continue being an amazing coach. So, Obi, you're a high flyer. That's pun intended, man. Uh, I used to talk about you being an electrifying dunger between the legs against GW. And then I asked Coach yes, Grant sir. about the conversation. goes all the way back to freshman year when you pulled that off, maybe when you weren't supposed to. Yes. Yeah, uh, the, the first time I pulled it off, uh, he looked at me and was like, don't don't ever do it again. But we was only up by like six points, I think, and it was four minutes left. But the second time I did it, we was up by a lot more, and I, I was a lot more confident in doing it that time. So he wasn't mad the second time, but I don't know if I'll do it again. <laughs> All right, so you are getting, of course, ready to play at the next level. How are you getting ready yes, to do that during a time where obviously it's tough to get out? And how excited are you to get to play in the NBA soon? Uh, first, I, I, I'm definitely excited for the opportunity to play at the next level. It's, it's always been a dream of mine to play in the NBA. And for it to be like this, it's, it's amazing. But um, I, every single day I'm in the gym, uh, I have a gym near me where uh, I'm working one-on-one -on -one with me and my brother, and we're just in the gym getting shots up and working on things we need to work on. So, Before I let you go, best memory from the Dayton season this past year? The brotherhood that we, that we, uh, that we made uh, this whole year. Uh, everybody on my team, uh, Jalen, Trey, Ryan, Ibby, Dwayne, Every single person on my team, uh, we, we created a brotherhood, and it was amazing, and I love those guys. All right. Obi Toppin joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. Obi, congratulations again, and we look forward to seeing you in the NBA soon, man. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Gary, I'll start with you first. I, I mentioned I would love to have the finalists there, a great starting five, and at the end, it's Obi Toppin out of date. And it should have been Obi Toppin out of Dayton. You could make a case for Luca Garza. I think you could also make a case for Yudoka Azabuki. But 
you know, Obi Toppin was the best player in college basketball this year, and he was on a team that was going to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. The team only lost twice all season, never in regulation, perfect in the Atlantic 10, and what an amazing story. This is a young man, after his senior year of high school basketball, had zero Division I offers, went to a prep school, grew from 6'4 to 6'9 after a red shirt academic season at Dayton, really good as a red shirt freshman last season. He was the A-10 rookie of the year, but he burst onto the scene this season. And now not only is he the Naismith National Player of the Year, he's going to be a lottery pick as well. And he's got a bright, bright future. That young man is going to make a lot of money playing basketball over the next decade. I love Obi Toppin. Uh, here's a kid that deserved this award. A lot of other great uh, candidates, but I had a chance to watch this kid not only playing the game in person when I had a game for CBS Sports Network, uh, this past season, but I had a chance to watch him practice. A lot of times, what you see in games starts in practice. His leadership, uh, his communication style, the way he cares about his teammates, but this guy is one of the most fierce competitors that I saw in college basketball this season on both ends of the floor. Guys, obviously we're not going to be able to crown a champion this year, but we've talked about what Obi Toppin means to the Flyers and a Dayton double with Coach Grant. Gary, I'll start with you too. What did you think about the prospects of Dayton as we would have gotten to the Final Four in Atlanta uh, supposedly here this weekend? Well, you know, we had a sports line projection that made Dayton the probable national champion. So um, that that by itself, by definition, suggests that the Flyers had a real chance. Obviously, in a single elimination tournament, uh, nobody is is or is ever more likely to win it than the rest of the field, or at least it's a very rare thing. But I will say, if you were putting together a short list of teams that could have won six games in that bracket and, and cut nets uh, on Monday night down in Atlanta, Dayton had to be there. It starts with Obi Toppin, but it wasn't just him. Jalen Crutcher, terrific. The supporting cast, terrific. Terrific. Anthony Grant, uh, National Coach of the Year, and that was one of the best offensive teams in America, especially from two point range. Uh, you know, there would have been, you know, Kansas was great, Gonzaga was great, San Diego State was great, but Dayton, could Dayton have won the national championship? Absolutely. And Avery, Gary had talked about the pro prospects, he anticipates, uh, you know, a decade plus there for OB Top in the league. How, how do you envision his transition into the association? Well, my opinion is he, he's a top three pick in, in the NBA draft this year. Uh, at one time, I had him slotted around eight or nine, but he, he's moved up. Here's a kid that has unbelievable athleticism. Um, he can handle the ball. He's an underrated passer. But, but I think also because of his three-point shooting prowess, you know, last year he shoots 50% from three, not a, not a high-volume three-point shooter. This year he shoots about 39%, but his shot, his release, it, it translates to NBA basketball. And, and also on the defensive end, here's a kid that can defend one through five. Uh, he can defend smaller guys. He can play post-up guys. Uh, but the, his game is suited for the NBA, and, and Obi's going to be a perennial all-star. I'm not sure he's, if he's going to be a superstar, but he's definitely somewhere in between that superstar and a role player. He, he's going to be an NBA all-star his entire career, and uh, he's going to make somebody, a, 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 he's going to allow some NBA team, especially with his leadership style, to compete for championships. Here, here to that, or thanks to Avery Johnson and Gary Parrish. Guys, thank you for being with us all week. We've appreciated your insight there for our winners, both Wednesday, Friday, and of course yesterday on Thursday. Thank you. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.